Well, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we are beginning the seminars, the seminar series for our laboratory, for Minds Lab. And to start the year, we have Dr. Laura Carpi, we kindly, which kindly accepted to give this, this talk to us. Uh, she has a bachelor degree in physics, uh, a PhD in enver environmental engineering from the University of Newcastle, Australia. And she has a number of postdoctoral fellowships from the Federal University of Alagoas, Polytechnic University of Catalonia, and also in the graduate program of computational and mathematical modeling at Cefetch in Minas Gerais. And she is now she's starting a postdoc in Minds Lab this year. So to, to to give her this a welcome to, to the lab, mm -hmm. I, I ask her to, do, to give this talk. <laughs> and, well, Laura, thank you very much for presenting your work and, and your research. And the, the word is yours. <laughs> thank you, Freddie. Um, I have to say that Osvaldo, who is in the group, is was my a PhD advisor. So, <laughs> so to I was, I think about uh, this. Okay, thinking about my this presentation, I decided to. Uh, so I, I am not. Uh, of your area uh, to give an overview of the, some work, works I did and some show some research lines we were working. Um, so I look for a title that could uh, represent all these, these works. Uh, dynamical systems, as you know, are basically systems that uh, whose uh, uh, whose state changes in time, evolves in time according to some rules. And for example, the climate system is a, is a non-linear dynamical system that is very complex, that have a natural variability and uh, several schemes in time and space, uh, external forces uh, that influence it. So, um, and like climate, there are uh, many, many dynamical systems that have a lot of inter interacting elements uh, that are being studied through the concept of networks. So I will show some, some applications with it. Uh, so I divided the presentation in three parts. The first one, I will show you a little bit about the construction of climate networks. That was the uh, work I did with Osvaldo and in my PhD, during my PhD. Then, uh, as you work with time series, I will show you a methodology that transforms time series into networks. And then you can study these time series through the network properties or methodologies, characteristics. And the third part, uh, I will show you um, an, uh, some measures we, we proposed that are the, the similarity, diversity and diffusion in single and interconnected networks. Uh, I put together because are the, the, we use the same, the same measures, the same method, uh, basic methodologies. And this uh, have uh, with uh, these three parts have in common that are a study dynamical system through the perspective of networks and uh, using uh, information theory, quantifiers of information theory, channel entropy, fissure information, uh, some the divergences, and then uh, I present an ideas for future works and uh, ongoing works. So this is a, a simple representation of how a climate network is constructed. So you have the planet Earth and you have um, the reanalysis data 
that is um, freely available from the uh, National Oceanic Atmospheric, uh, Atmospheric Administration. Uh, it's presented in a regular grid in which uh, we, you have uh, uh, for each point of the, of the planet, we ha you have a, a time series that uh, for many, many climatic variables, temperature, pressure, uh, humidity, and so on, uh, wind, uh, a lot of, uh, many, many uh, variables, different uh, variables. So, uh, with this time series, uh, we construct uh, a network, we, we, we um, assume that each, each point, each time series is a node in the network, and we create the network by uh, studying the interrelationship uh, between the points. Uh, we measure correlations, uh, linear correlations, nonlinear correlations, we establish a threshold uh, from which we think uh, this, this measure is significant and we create a network. And then we, when we have the network, we construct, uh, we study through many tools we have, we study the patterns and uh, the spatial patterns are on, on time scales we found. This is our from Doge's paper in case. Uh, the, the first application uh, of climate network was made by Sonic, uh, Anastasio Sonic in 2006, and he proposed it, the methodology I present uh, uh, I presented. And um, they assume that uh, Dynamical systems form a network and their collective behavior can be analyzed through the network structure. Um, so I, in, this, in this slide, I show you uh, the, um, the degree distribution. And it really is the weighted, uh, area weighted degree distribution, that is the number of links of connections each point of the planet has. Uh, from the network created from uh, uh, surface air temperature. So we we can see that this very uh, 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 in red is highlighted the Enso basin, the El Niño South Oscillation Basin that is very con highly connected. And the other figures, the series of three figures, are the other uh, teleconnection teleconnection patterns are are uh, points of the planets in which that, that, that they are very distant in space, but they are very uh, highly correlated. So uh, this paper, first paper of Sonis uh, says that um, these teleconnections are the, are the key for the stability of the planet, of the climate system and the, the, the efficient flux of energy in the atmosphere. In the atmosphere. Um, so uh, this is uh, some super nodes. Super nodes are, uh, which are, we call the tele teleconnections, that are points with a uh, high number of connections. And this is a characteristic of a small world network. So this is what was Sonis found in his first uh, art. This is a, another uh, work that uh, is ours. Um, we study this. Uh, we study the uh, structural evolution of the tropical Pacific climate network with this, the same data set. So we, we select the ends of basin in the tropical Pacific, and we uh, created uh, ne networks from the surface air temperature for uh, every year since 1945 to, 19, uh, to uh, 2006. And for each year we compute by the, the degree, uh, using the degree distribution of the network, 
uh, we compute a measure that is the Shenzhen Shannon divergence a measure of the similarity between two probability distributions, P and Q in, the, in this equation. And we compare each network with a ref, uh, network reference. So, so uh, with the network is more similar than the, the reference, that is a random one that we use as a reference, uh, the distance is, uh, is uh, shorter and we have a low value. So we found that all the, the La Nina events have a low value of Shenzhen Jano diversions and the El Nino events, years for El Nino events, showed a high, a high value of the Shenzhen Jano diversions. So we found a kind of pattern and we also found a spatial pattern that is very interesting because, because uh, it's got a, this uh, four that four they are together in the left are characteristic of La Nina and the other ones for El Nino. This is a plot that where we show in each point the number of uh, connections that this point have in the network. Okay, I put some things uh, about climate network because I know some of you work with climatic variables, so maybe it could be interesting. So the second part I would show, I want to show you is the visibility graph that is a transformation of time series into networks. So in this graph, each node uh, corresponds. Uh, to a point in the, in the to a data point in the time series. Uh, two points or two nodes are connected uh, if they have visibility between them. Uh, in other words, if there exists, uh, if you see part uh, B of the figure, a straight line between two, two nodes not intercepting any intermediate value. So, we create this line for okay, all the, the series and we create a network with these connections where each node is, is a point in the time series. This is the, the, the original visibility graph and this is the network created with this, with this visibility graph, the, the, part, the part C of the figure. And this is the degree distribution of, the, of the, this network created uh, from this time series. This time series is a financial time series, and the, the close figure is uh, retain, the, the series of retained rights. Right Some interesting properties of the HBCs are that they inherit uh, many characteristics of the, that, uh, of the time series. Uh, periodic time series, uh, transforming regular graphs, random time series, transforming random graphs with exponential degree distributions, and fractal time series, transforming scale-free graphs with uh, power law degree distributions. Uh, these networks are always connected because each, each point sees at least uh, its first network uh, neighbors, uh, undirected and invariant under rescaling and translations. This is the, the, the paper uh, when it was pro where it was proposed this, this methodology that is very, very used now. From this uh, network, we can, we can extract uh, many, many probability distributions. The, 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 the most uh, commonly used is the degree distribution that is the fraction of nodes with, uh, with degree K, with a determined degree. The distance distribution, that is the fraction of nodes at distance D. The node distance distribution, that is a set of distribution for each node, is the distance distribution for each node. So it's a set of probability distribution uh, for each node. But then I, I, I will explain better. And there are many others. Uh, we, we recently proposed another when we, we include weights in the, in the links. 
This is the horizontal visibility graph that is a geometrical simplification of the visibility graph in which the lines uh, for creation of the links are all horizontal. In, in, uh, and it's a very it's a good simplification because uh, for large, for long, very long time series, is very computationally more efficient. This is the application we did in a laser time series. This is a, 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 um, the first part of the figure is a time series of uh, laser intensity for a, for a pump power of uh, uh, this, 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 the, this is the corresponding network that we constructed from this from this uh, time series and this is a the character, this this points in the um, these lines in the, the final of the, the network are characteristic of that kind that um, some kind of correlations in the time series. And then we put them in the Shannon Fisher plane. Um, this this uh, values of uh, uh, this, this networks that each point of this uh, this each triangle uh, is um, the values of Shannon and Fisher uh, information measures from for these uh, networks for different pump powers uh, and these uh, numbers here are um, are the hardest component of this of three uh, series of fractional granular motion. So we found a very similar a similar behavior. We put it with with a well known system to, to compare to understand more the dynamic of the of the time series study. And here we show we have um, the squares are only the peaks with uh, of this, the, the same series, but only the peaks with a threshold with determined. And these numbers are the hard component of a uh, fractional Gaussian noise is hard component. So they are very superposed in this region. So we, we can have an idea of the of the nature of the of the time series of this laser. And this is the, the now distant distribution. I talk uh, the construct the construction of this now different distribution uh, that is a uh, very a very complete distribution very uh, very informative of the structure of the of the network because we have uh, for this is for example the the, um, the set of the distribution for this this network of five nodes so, for uh, for example, for node one, we have uh, connected uh, four nodes, and we have here that uh, we have two nodes at distance one and two nodes at distance two. So this represents two nodes at distance one and two nodes at distance two. For node two, we have three nodes at distance one, three of four, and one of them, uh, only one, uh, this one, three, at distance uh, two. So uh, in this way we create this probability distribution. We call no distance the probability distribution. We have a set for each one. And this is a, a this is a measure that we create from this probability distribution that we call network node dispersion because it's a kind of quantification of the heterogeneity of the, the of the patterns of connections a network has. So the NDD of she is a is a single value, but it's a characteristic value of the network. So we are presenting a, a, a different feature of the network. And it's uh, computed through the Shenzhen Shannon Divergency um, through uh, among the probability distribution of the of the nodes of the networks that I, I show 
uh, before. So we you have we we use this to study random graphs and small world uh, graphs. Um, it is very precise and uh, it was able to dete detect percolation in random graphs. As we can see here, we found the percolation value for um, these are. Um, um, here we have the, the probability for the construction of these graphs. And we have uh, here three, three points in which the, the networks are different. And we, we see that in B, this is A, we, we are, are still disconnected. Here we, we found a, a bigger component and is the, the point of the percolation point, and this is uh, point C where the, the structure is connected. So this is a very, this, this was uh, very interesting for us, and this is the small world uh, evolution, in which we have a fixed network, and we, have, we are increasing the probability of connection, this is the clustering coefficient of the resulting networks, and the, this is the, the um, shorted path of the network. And this is our measure that finds these two transitions in, the, in this process that was so very interesting for us. So we decided to put this NDD into a... Into a um, a measure of the similarity uh, to quantify the similarity between networks because it's, it is very precise. It's a lot of information, has information about the distances, about the diameter, about the degrees of the network. So we put um, this three terms equation, which the most important, sorry, the most important one is this one. and. We put always a, a, a high weight. Um, we use this NDD to compare two, two different graphs, G and G prime. And this is, uh, we propose this in, in one article, and it's very, very, it's been very used for bi in biology, in chemistry, and financial networks uh, because it's very uh, sensitive to small small differences in the in the networks this is a, a simple example of uh, two two networks uh, that we compare with the humming humming that is very used in, in the network science so we have two two um, groups of uh, patients with control and alcoholic ones. Uh, we see that uh, the harm in this distance uh, is not able to separate the, to characterize the, the, um, the two groups and our measures separate uh, very well the, the, the groups. In, in the article we have uh, Another, I don't, didn't put the reference, I think. Yes, this is the, this is the, the reference. Yeah. So, um, this is our dissimilarity measure, the measure. So, a lot of information. <laughs> uh, this is um, another, this is, uh, in the third part of the presentation, I put, I put a little bit about interconnected networks. Uh, network of networks can be represented as layers of the multi-layer network in which uh, each layer represents an individual network from the set of networks that describe the whole system. So, for example, uh, this is a multi-layer networks, that is, uh, each layer, we can consider each layer uh, each of these networks. One is rail network of the 
British Public uh, Transportation Network. The second one is the Air Network, and the third is Coach Net Network. So for each network, we have uh, different nodes, uh, different connections, but when we put together, we, we can uh, uh, analyze uh, as a whole, as a unique uh, network. Through the points we have, uh, from we points, uh, we have inter interlayer connections from airports to, to rail stations or coach. You, we have some um, canals of interconnection between the, the layers. So this is a, it's a typical uh, inter multi-layer network. This is a multiplex network. It's a, it's a special uh, case of multi-layer network in which we, you have uh, the same set of nodes. Uh, and the only possible interlayer connection you have is the same nodes between the layers. So in this case, for example, I, we have um, the air, a Brazilian Air Transportation net, Network. Uh, in each layer is a different uh, airline, Azul, uh, um, Gold, One, Pantanal. Uh, these three already disappeared. But we we make uh, we made a study about these uh, these um, networks, um, and we study through a measure that we call diversity. What happened with the diversity of the whole system when we uh, diversity and connections uh, in the, 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 the connectivity of the network when we extract one, one company of the system or when we include uh, one company of, to the system. So this is the network from 2010, 2014 and 2018. We, we study what happened with this in, in uh, Olympics, Games, in Rio and the World Cup uh, also. And this, uh, this uh, multiplex network, are another, these measures are an adaptation of the, the previous um, the similarity measure, but uh, considering a multiplex structure. So we compare node, the same node in the different layers with this node, distance distribution. And we create this, uh, this uh, the similarity measure that's, that quantifies the dissimilarity in terms of connectivity patterns that node I has in layers P and Q, for example. And we consider uh, the node distance distribution, again, the, the Jensen channel divergence, the node distance distribution, and we included the uh, transition matrix because we. we uh, it was, was better the, the, the results. So then we have with this uh, GPQ, the average of this uh, all, all nodes in a layer, we have the dissimilarity between two layers. And then uh, we create, uh, we propose this, we, we formalize the measure of, the, of diversity. We, um, in which we, that is based in the, um, for example, here we, we compute, um, here we have uh, Star Alliance, the companies present in Star Alliance at Iberia, Alitalia, Boelin, Ryanair, and Lufthansa. But uh, the, the original uh, network work, uh, have 37, 37 layers, but this alliance um, we study through the diversity measure to study uh, what happened when we include or we exclude companies from the, the alliance. 
which companies will increase uh, our diversity of connections or which company will decrease our diversity, diversity of in connections to maintain uh, which companies maintain the performance uh, better in, the, in terms of the, the um, diversity. And we create what we call diversity order, that is uh, uh, this, this O star alliance, uh, in the order of, uh, of the quantity of diversity they, um, they contribute to the system. So in this case, if you have to take one of the alliances, we can take Lufthansa because it's very similar to, to Brussels or, or contrary. Um, there are, uh, they have very similar, similar uh, routes. This is an example of, for example, uh, if you, we have this, these four layers, what happens if we change this layer to this layer, for this layer, in which we increase this link. The diversity, that is this US, of the complete system is this, 1.4, uh, one and the diversity with the, this change is uh, de decreases a little bit because we are putting this link that is already here and we are increasing the re redundancy of the links and this is if the, instead we change this for this we increase the diversity because this link is not present in any of the layers so the diversity increases. Uh, well, this is, these are the, 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 the measures, the, pro, the, the, the methods we proposed in the last years. And this is the, the project uh, I have in, in ongoing at the moment. And this is, this is uh, the, a proposition of a measure of diffusion capacity in layer in networks that is already finished and we are putting it in archives in the next week. But I think I thought it was too much to present here, maybe another opportunity. And diffusion capacity is a concept that quantifies through the concept of dynamical path the potential of an element of the system and also of the system in itself to propagate information. So, uh, in, uh, in the difference of this measure with the, the measure proposed for diffusion of networks that are, are already currently in the literature is that we, we uh, this dynamical path, we propose the dynamical path through the consideration of the potential of the network uh, for its only for its topological nature, for, for its form, structural form, and we include the uh, characteristics of the dynamics that is uh, using this structure. So uh, we make a, we made a, a combination of uh, trade-offs between these two characteristics and we create a dynamical path. And with that dynamical path, we create a fusion capaci capacity that is the, the capacity of an element, for example, of a node, to diffuse information depending on its connectivity in the network, its position on the network, but also uh, considering uh, the um, but also considering the dynamics that is uh, flowing in the, in the network. So uh, this diffusion capacity is changing in time as the information is uh, uh, flowing. And this is a small example of the of the of this uh, of this method, this diffusion capacity. These are we, we here we have this, the SIR model, the epidemic model we have uh, at this this um, model was in a, was um, proposed for a small grid. I 
25 nodes. I, I forgot to put the grid here, but uh, and, and we start the process of uh, dissemination um, in two different in two process, different process. In one process, we infect the the node that is in the center of the network, and in another, the one node that is in the in the periphery. So we have here. In Laura? Sí. I, I, yes. I think we lost your last ah. speech. You could repeat the, you were talking about this, the central node, that you yeah. infected the yeah. central node and then the referral node. Yes, we have, are you hearing me? Hearing me? Yes. Uh, so we, uh, may do two different processes. One of them, this infected C, refers to a process that is initiated in the center, in the center of the, the grid, the regular grid. It's the central individual. And this uh, one, the, the, this, is an, is when, it, uh, when the node infected is in the, in the point, in the periphery of the network. So here we plot the diffusion capacity of the, the whole system. When one process is initiated in the central node and in the peripheral node. So we see that the diffusion capacity of the system is uh, higher for the, when the node, when the node is um, infected is the central and uh, lower when the, the peripheral node is, uh, is infected. And we, something interesting we, we realized with this, comparing these two graphics is that the maximum, the, the maximum value of the diffusion capacity um, comes earlier than the peak of the, in, the maximum infected, number of infected people. So, Maybe we don't know, but maybe you can be used to, to, to know that the peak of the infect on the infect uh, the infection the, the epidemic is, is, is coming. So we can be used as an early indicator of this this kind of processes. So this is a, a paper that we that we are submitting. Then I have, because I am working with ex, uh, is with a student from CFH that is uh, police, <laughs> and have have a lot of data that is not public, <laughs> and we had uh, interesting results using uh, the. Using the um, a, a multiplex uh, methodology, using the, the same uh, the same group of criminals and uh, using an, in each layer, we we use um, different crimes theft. Uh, um, I don't remember that, but I ha we have seven different crimes that the same group of people is participating. So we, we, we found very interesting interesting uh, features as people that are seems to be not very important in the network but um, had an unexpected important roles uh, in some of them. So it was very and we know that they are free now are are free, <laughs> but because uh, many of them are, are in jail now. <laughs> this one well, is not in jail. <laughs> so, well, I am very interested in studying social networks, uh, especially uh, to study changes uh, in the patterns during the, the pandemic. I, I see a lot of changes in the patterns of Twitter, of the, the role of, of Twitter in the, the life of people. So I am very interested in studying this. 
and relate this with that sociological concepts as autopoiesis of lumen and uh, matura, uh, of maturana and lumen that extend this idea to social networks. And this uh, multivariate visibility graph, I think, could be interesting for, for, for MINDS group because uh, this is uh, a method proposed by La Casa also, the, 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 who proposed the visibility graph, in which you uh, can create from different time series a multiplex network in, in which each node, each time step, uh, is a, a um, node of the network, and you have several, uh, this point in several layers, and you compare and you evaluate, can evaluate this from different we have methodologies and network measures. Uh, well, I think this is it. And for minds, I have these ideas, but I don't know. I, I have to know more that what are you doing to have a, a clear picture. But, how can we collaborate? But I, I, I imagine that this multivariate visibility to study uh, interconnect, uh, to create interconnected uh, systems from sensors of, uh, I don't know, uh, could be interesting for smart cities, for example. To the, uh, design networks, considering this, this with the specific characteristics, for example, that a, diff, a specific diffusion rate or efficiency, um, uh, identification of patterns and stream events, um, early sign, signals of uh, stream events, and also classification. That's Federico told me one example. <laughs> I didn't think, but I think this is this is it. <laughs> okay, Laura, thank you very much for your very interesting talk. Uh, well, I, I see there are many many opportunities to to collaborate. Uh, in, in our group, we have uh, many works on much much varied series uh, uh -huh. in renewable renewable energy, smart cities. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also have uh, some some students working on classification of time series, uh, anomaly detection, and, and things like this, and some, some applications like this that uh, could be explored with, with your methodology and with your techniques. Uh, anyway, I would like to ask uh, everyone if, if they have questions, or comments. Uh, I, I, can I say something? Yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> the, the codes of all our measures are available if you want to use it in this this uh, GitHub site. Uh, great, great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, any questions from, from the audience? Mm -hmm. Oh. This is very. Uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, mm. You have you have you seen some the use of this visibility graph uh, for images? For oh. 2D, 2D uh. because we saw them for 1D signals in time series. But what about the images? No, did, uh, no, I didn't see for, ima for images. We, we once tried with Alejandro to and Osvaldo to create a visibility, but we started and then we, we leave the idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> Osvaldo wanted to say something about this. Osvaldo, well, you remember that we tried to abandon the idea. Propose the visibility for image classification. When I was in Alagoas. <laughs> uh, well, this was um, 
and primary idea to, to work in this kind of thing. Basically, in this direction, not specific with the visibility graph, it will be the, the, the next talk, <laughs> seminar talk that give uh, Alejandro. Uh, we apply um, uh, the van and pump uh, ordinal pattern and ordinal pattern transitions for uh, for uh, classification of uh, in, is a direct application to image, in particular to classify uh, SAR ima image. And this is the make it with the uh, different. Uh, I mean, we first is quite related with this uh, classification. Uh, use uh, ordinal pattern, and after that we see which part. How is the the pattern? Are each pattern is look uh, following. Uh, in the time series. This will be uh, directly application in the... Transition probability of patterns. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is you construct like a ordinal pattern uh, transition networks. And, then, and now we are working in, in this direction. Uh, is this uh, actual... Uh, project we so started to work in this because you can make a different uh, application and now try to see uh, which kind of uh, properties do you have with this transition pattern uh, network this is quite uh, quite new and this this is uh, something dynamic uh, uh, view of the transition pattern, or the pattern that uh, that represent uh, the time series. Uh, this and uh, something very we find something very interesting in this kind of things. Uh, but okay, this is what I apply. Uh, and published uh, recently in order to characterize texture and we can differentiate the different textures in the uh, or in in, in, in in this kind of image but we don't use uh, uh, or uh, Visibility yeah, visibility has. But, but this could be something that we can try to, to do. <laughs> I mean, we use this because uh, we are more, in the last time, we are more focused in the, in the uh, ordinal patterns and how we can continue in the, you see, uh, ordinal pattern, and you make the representation by ordinal pattern in the time series is a representation of stat. Yeah? Because you say, okay, my time series is under the uh, dynamical system in this condition. But what happened when then we started to, to see in the case of dynamical, that means how the different pattern or the different time series uh, started to evolve in time. And this is, you can study with these uh, 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 transitions uh, of the pattern, how, how pattern is follow each pattern and some pattern are not allowed to appear, uh, this kind of thing. This is what we, uh, we are working now. Uh, I suppose uh, Alejandro, when you listen, uh, Alejandro present our project of the uh, identification of texture, you will be understand better at this kind of thing. And also we can advance that there is some interesting things because it's in some case, uh, some problem 
that there are how we can make this this kind of transition and associated different probability distribution something similar that we have with uh, uh, with this uh, kind of uh, our networks but uh, we don't we don't not, uh, work directly with the uh, image in image i think it's a uh, I saw all see with uh, with this uh, visibility graph and so I only see a paper of uh, La Casa try to do something, but I don't, I don't see much more than than this. Uh, but this is something that will um, will be nice to explore, yeah. Yeah. And try to see which is the for, connection or teleconnection of these kind of things. I think it is now now this connection in between transformation between time series to uh, network or complex network is uh, have a lot of things for to do. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good uh, idea continue working in this direction and try to develop a new new system, new, new tools for, for that. Yeah. Let's see. I can't. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks as well. Yeah. So, anyone else? I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I still have to. Uh, I have to. With when, to when you said, I I was thinking of uh, of a skeleton when you said, uh, actually, what can we do with uh, with images? And I said, okay, image is too complex. It has too many colors. It, it, it could be very problematic. But if we can, let's say we are working, I am working uh, um, about transforming automatically through uh, deep net from uh, an image or a video, more uh, not an image, but a, a sequence of uh, images transforming it into uh, a skeleton for rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Now, a skeleton is actually a graph. The, the motivation of this is actually when uh, you have some surgery in the hip. Now, when we, you have a 3D modeling that, uh, so they want to have this uh, uh, before and after evaluation. Some of these graphs could actually give you uh, the differences between before and after. Mm -hmm. If we can, if we can uh, uh, relate to a graph like you did, it's it's much less in joints. You have uh, a small amount of uh, of uh, edges and uh, nodes uh, because these joints are actually we can take it from uh, from all kinds of kinects and 3D cameras with with. Uh, but I have to think about it. I will read the papers and then I will think how, how we can actually use these uh, to evaluate the rehabilitation uh, process. Because the, these differences actually can give us um, uh, um, maybe a, a, a quality of, of this rehabilitation or, or things like that that we want to... Uh, find out and not only, uh, you know, things that we can measure uh, w with a stick in the sense of, uh, of uh, how many centimeters you could go this way or this way. Yeah. That's the way they do it now. Uh, but I, I want to read the, the papers first and then uh, we can uh, think okay. about it together yeah. because I, we have tons of images. Really, we have a lot of them. Like a hundred of thousands. Uh, we have it before, after, we have the image, we have the RGB, we have the skeleton that was made with, with, a, with, a, uh, with a software, but it, it's, it's iterative with uh, a person that is doing it. So we, and we want to automate it, all this mm -hmm. skeletonizing. And uh, so we, take, we can take it one step further maybe to for it won't be I think it will be, it will be a very interesting topic to see 
uh, as a measurement. For them, they don't need this, I, I think. Uh, but, you know, we, we have so much data. It's, 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 I have to think about it, how uh -huh. we can do these things together. Interesting. You have any, any work? I can read no. No, not, not yet. We're, we're starting now. We're just starting a month ago. We started about, we took the, these things and we said, okay, how can we deep learn it? We're, we're, start, we're trying to deep learn it in a nor, in, you know, normal, uh, uh, normal, uh, um, architectures that we have, you know, the, the really good ones. And we start, you know, optimizing the hyperparameters and all the regular things that we do. And I want to see how far we are because, because it's, a, it's a very blurry image and you have to uh, extract or learn, it doesn't matter what, uh, a very accurate skeleton because that's the way, it's, it's the indication of how the rehabilitation is done mm -hmm. because there's no way you can learn about it now. It's it's all. I think the physiotherapist is is doing his best, but it's not accurate because on a very uh, like very thin people are much more uh, the the other relation between what they do and what they expose is very uh, very uh, like if you're really really fat, sorry about or obese. The skeleton, your skeleton is very far away from what you see. And if you're very, so the, the extraction is very important to be very uh, accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we just started working on it. But okay. if we do something, uh, but it, it doesn't have to be sequential. We can work on this, uh, you know, we... We can work on that with them, with the students, and we can work on with other students. It, it doesn't have to be one after another. It's the same data, but we can do different things. Okay. Yes. Interesting application. Yeah. I, could, I can send you your, the papers. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> I will be very thank. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. It reminded me of a related application we have in our lab that's uh, sign language recognition, in which we also use uh, the skeleton as part of the information yep. for classification. And well, I think these diversity measures could, could be used to 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 help the classifications of this of this, yep. this signs, right? Which are also uh, we have also the this series of video of the the person doing the sign and we have a sequence of the skeletons which are graphs yeah uh, it's it's the same idea it's exactly yeah. the same idea yeah it's very it's very to explore too yeah although cnn does it better <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there is like I don't know, like, I think maybe a year and a half ago, we were sitting and just eating lunch, and there were physicists uh, sitting in our table, and they were so, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, they were really, I'll say it in a very bad English, but don't take me wrong, they were really uh, angry, pissed off, that so many things are, are actually solved uh, with uh, deep net. And uh, nobody knows why. Nobody knows why it comes to that. But the, the results, you can't, you can't say anything about it. It's, it's, it's so much better than all, than all the solvers together that nobody <laughs> understands yet uh, how it's done. It's for the new generation. Really, that's what I tell the students. It's for you to figure out. <laughs> Really, it's 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 uh, explainable AI is going to be the next step. I'm sure it has to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, do we have uh, comments? Uh, 
participate in the, the defense of Carl, right? And as you know, some some we have many students working on fuzzy time series. Mm -hmm. is, we convert the time series into a fuzzy representation. Uh -huh. And I was wondering if you could explore some some new visibility graph for this context. Because you mentioned of weighted visibility graphs. Yes. Uh, maybe some kind of fuzzy weights for these visibility graphs. It could be could be some uh, could be interesting to, mm -hmm. to, yeah. to yeah, see. To, to think, yes, but we can make a make up a, a new new way, a new visibility graph method. For this kind of fuzzy time series. Mm -hmm. Yes. The way that the way that PDF we construct is measures the difference of the values of the of the time series. Uh -huh. This this is the way we use. Yeah. But in fuzzy time series we don't have values. We have fuzzy sets or yeah. values. We replace the values by fuzzy sets. So mm -hmm would require a new information that we we can include. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I was wondering if we could pursue this idea. For yes. yes. We can. Well, I think this is it. I would like to thank again, Laura, for the thank very you. nice talk. Yes, it was <laughs> a fascinating talk. So thank you. Oh. Thank, you thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you, you all for coming. Thank you all for for the audience, and that's it. We will we'll have okay. uh, more seminars this year. Uh, I okay. guess Osvaldo will be one of the the speech speakers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two weeks. Next, next next one. Yeah. Okay. I choose to talk about uh, while uh, e, uh, epilepsy. Uh, how to characterize uh, seizure, a kind of seizure in epilepsy. Um, oh. That will be using wavelet uh, signal information theory. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. You see. Yeah, I hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. But, uh, Thank, you very Thank, much. You. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs> See you soon. Bye-bye. Go with your family. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.